I joined the Marine Corps in 2005, right after I graduated high school. My time in Iraq was, was interesting. It had its ups and downs. Scott and I met in a church parking lot. He rode up on his motorcycle, and that's how we began talking and starting a friendship from there. When I got out of the military, I wanted to do a job that was very similar to that. To, to achieve that, I really, I just wanted to go into law enforcement. Law enforcement appealed to me because I would be on patrol every day, pretty much. I would, it would be a job that I can essentially be deployed all the time. How I pictured our life together was um, a couple kids. I would stay at home, raise kids. He would have a job. Competition out there is really stiff. You know, there's three, four hundred candidates, and you know, I'd make it pretty far. You know, maybe to the top ten, and then you know, obviously wasn't selected. I'm a vet. I have a background. I have a degree. Why can't I find a job? Like, it, it was just mind-boggling to me. I took a job in security because it's really the easiest thing to get into that's law enforcement-like. My thoughts on him being a security guard is I hated every moment of it. I didn't want him having a gun on him. When he was in the Marines, his rifle was his security blanket. It was his best friend. So I understood why he felt safe with a gun, but I didn't. I got a job in Palm Springs with the executive protection company. That was within our first year of marriage. And at that time, my wife was also pregnant. Our time in Palm Springs, it was a pretty lonely year. We only lasted a year. Well, I'd work, you know, five, 12 hour shifts a week. And I worked nights too, so I was hardly ever around. We didn't have friends, we didn't have family out there. I was completely isolated. I felt like I was just wandering in the desert by myself. I'm doing my normal routine patrol and I stopped in this complex at like three o'clock in the morning and the news came on and I heard about a helicopter that had went down in Florida and it was uh, full of Marines from uh, second MSOB, uh, Marine um, Special Operations. And I knew that a friend of mine, you know, was stationed there. And he had, I think he just got back from Afghanistan. He had just won the Silver Star. Like there's no way that it would be him. Yeah, and then I, you know, a couple days later that, you know, found all the parts washing up on the beach and whatnot. And they never, they never made it. When Andy died, that's when it hit me. I was like, dude, like, that guy made it to the top. But then it's like, well, well now he's gone. Him and his wife just announced that they were pregnant with their first baby the weekend before the helicopter crash. So Scott then realized, wow, that could be me. I could leave my wife and my two kids. And I kept pursuing, you know, that adrenaline rush, that, that desire to, to, to want to be in that military environment. So I think it was that pivotal moment that he was, okay, I'm a husband, I'm a dad. So it was a huge shift for him. I found out about Workshops for Warriors through a friend of mine that came through this program. And we were actually drinking some beers and celebrating Andy's life. My buddy Josh is like, hey man, I was, you know, went through the welding program, workshops for warriors, they have a machining program, maybe you, sh you should look into it. And I'm like, yeah, I think I will. When Scott was accepted into Workshop for Warriors, I was excited. I knew he would be in a building, and it would be Monday through Friday, and I knew he was safe. Having other Marines in the classroom was helpful. We have a similar mindset. The other Marines in his class helped him, pointed him in the right direction. They were able to work together to figure it out. And once I got it, once I understood it, I, I, I understand it on a different level. I can break it down and explain it. And, um, and that's, that's when I realized I was you know, pretty decent at teaching this stuff. The day that Scott got hired at Workshops for Warriors was a huge relief. We have a husband, we have a dad, he's there with us, and we can go camping on the weekends, we can do family activities, and he's there. It means the world to us to have him back in our life. Our students are getting nationally recognized credentials they can take anywhere and, and, and get a really, really good paying job. I recently graduated a student, graduated, got out of the Marine Corps, got a job up in Oregon, making 17 plus dollars an hour, and now he's buying a house. 
What I would want to tell Workshops for Warriors is just thank you, that it made a huge difference in our family. He's happy when he hears that one of his guys just got a job. He is so excited that he was able to help somebody, and to see that makes our whole family happy. These students are the guys that sacrificed, gone overseas, got shot at, got blown up. Now we're giving back to them. We're allowing them to just live their lives with a sense of pride. Why should you donate to Workshops for Warriors? Because you're not just donating to the guys in the program or the ladies in the program, you're actually donating to their whole family. Yeah, we bought a condo just recently, yeah. We get to paint walls and move in furniture and our girls have a special room that's just theirs and they even have a backyard. And Scott's there with us. And I'm not by myself, he's there and he's part of it. I love coming home and I don't know, who gets the experience. I hope everyone does at some point in their life, but walking up to your house and the kids are screaming at you from the door, Daddy's home. That's just, anything that happened to work at that point, it just doesn't matter. <laughs> it's, it's, it's awesome. We climbed the mountain and we're at the top and it's just bright days and it's amazing.